Hello there, this is Aiden Jonah, Editor-in-Chief of the Canada Files. I am here co-hosting episode 14 of Canada and Palestine, The War on Zionism with Laith Marouf of Free Palestine TV. Laith, welcome back yet again. Great to be with you, Aiden. Thanks, Laith. So there's so much happening uh, around the axis of resistance and the Zionist regime. You know, I was watching your interview with uh, Dimitri and the point about uh, Syria potentially smuggling weapons into the occupied West Bank it was very, very interesting. You know, I was reading some Vietnamese news a little bit um, and apparently Hezbollah uh, did some more uh, attacks out in the northern occupied Palestine. Uh, you know, so I think there's a lot going on among uh, many other things. And of course, just the overall uh, horrific, upstanding aggression uh, against the occupied West Bank. So, Leith, do you mind taking us through the situation that's evolving around the axis of resistance right now? Uh, obviously, the um, outright genocide continues in Gaza, and there's been a uh, very uh, advanced uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, traps and uh, ambushes put by the resistance over the last 48 hours in Gaza around the Nitzirim axis um, and around uh, Khan Yunis. Uh, there's, you can watch those videos out on Free Palestine TV's uh, social media channels. And, and the big story, of course, is in the West Bank, where the Israelis now are on the uh, sixth or seventh day of an invasion in Jenin, uh, Tul Kerem, and Nablus, and the refugee camps around them. There's total destruction of all of the infrastructure uh, in Jenin already. Uh, they're moving on to do the same thing in Nablus right now. Um, there is, of course, fierce resistance. There's at least uh, two or three Israeli soldiers that were liquidated by ambushes of Palestinian resistance in those areas. Um, and uh, we are looking right now at demonstrations breaking out in Ramallah because the uh, Palestinian Authority is not doing much. Uh, there's talk about a possible um, mutiny within the Palestinian Authority security forces, although they are all... Uh, trained by the Americans and, and vetted for their intelligence purposes. But the pressure is mounting so much that the uh, PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, that hosts all the Palestinian factions except Hamas and Islamic Jihad, uh, there's been meetings of the council and they're trying to have a unity front in confrontation with the Israelis, at least this is what the PLFP and the DFLP are asking um, Fatah to accept. Uh, so that is boiling and clearly looking at what Netanyahu and Ben Giver and others uh, within his coalition want. They want to, a total expulsion of the Palestinians, a total ethnic cleansing, genocide of the Palestinians in all of historic Palestine. They don't want a challenge anymore to their supremacist colonialist uh, regime. Uh, and finally, on the Lebanese front yesterday, Hezbollah attacked a gathering of Israeli Mossad agents in a field post that they um, put on the north of Palestine. Um, and it's like a checkpoint, but that wasn't supposed to be a checkpoint. It's an intelligence checkpoint. And they hit it with a guided missile, an Almaz, that has a camera on it. And again, Hezbollah released that video, and you can watch it on our channel, uh, Free Palestine TV. So there's two other things I want to discuss. Uh, firstly, there is obviously a wave of panic in the Zionist colony. Uh, you know, the Zionist colonists that were taken into uh, into Palestine, to the rest of Palestine, uh, some of them were killed. It's a little unclear how exactly it happened, but there's a whole, you know, the Zionists aren't happy, no, no of course. But uh, you also had the, Isra the Zionist trade unions uh, trying to call for a general strike, right? Because you have, as you've said to here, you've said to Ascaris, um, even some Zionists are... You know, they can see that the collapse is coming of, of their dear and, uh, entity. So 
I think it speaks to what you've said, though. It's just there is a collapse. There is a collapse, right? You have a moral, utter moral depravity. You know, there was a podcast that has millions of uh, listeners, a Zionist podcast in English, basically openly wanting to thirsting for genocide. Uh, you know, it's we can just we can. Who's Jewish it. boys? Eh? They say they called themselves. Yeah, we can we can see it in the very the very public eye, right? It, there really is there really is an implosion, uh, and there there's there is no way back up. I mean, there never should have been a way for the Zionists in the first place. There should not have been in Israel in the first place, but there is no way back up for them now. It's just an implosion, right? It's just an implosion, and for the better. It's just um, we don't want to see the ongoing genocide. We want that to end the second it can, right? But it is good to see the implosion of the Zionist entity. Remember last time we were talking about uh, the unions in Canada, um, you know, calling for a strike. Here is the Zionist unions are the ones that are going to go for general strike, not the supposed progressive unions in Canada and other places. And they're going to go for strike because they want to save the colony, not uh, liberate the Palestinian people. Um, the situation of those six uh, colonists that were um, captured by the Palestinians uh, in October 7th that uh, just got dead uh, is that um, there is now a new change in policy within Palestinian resistance and it's uh, announced in a speech of Abu Ubaidah uh, just uh, yesterday and at the same time there was the videos that released uh, recorded of those um, statements from those captives from those prisoners of war and the change in policy is that starting from today or from yesterday or from the day those those Zionists were liquidated uh, the minute that there is a possibility that the, the Zionists are um, getting close to the POWs are almost going to uh, you know free them then they sh they should be liquidated this is the new policy Palestinian resistance will not allow any uh, Israeli POWs to go free except through a exchange deal um, of POWs between the two sides. Otherwise, they will be killed on the spot before the Israeli military uh, reaches them. And that's a very important, I think, policy now. It, it you know, and this message from Abu Abaida and the videos of the colonists that recorded themselves begging for their freedom, asking their families and the Israeli public to pressure the, the government to stop bombing the locations they're in. This is why people are out in the streets in uh, the Zionist colony in huge numbers yesterday. This is why the Hesteradot, the uh, Zionist uh, general union, is calling for a strike because there is now clear decision by the Palestinians that these POWs, the Israeli POWs, will not be released except through an exchange uh, and or through uh, a coffin. All right, Leif. So I want to take things to the Canada and Palestine front. Now, there's something interesting coming from the Golden Mail. I'm sure you're familiar, Leif, with the Israeli strike on the Al Ali hospital back in October of 2023. Well, the Globe and Mail was filing uh, these access information requests seeking to get internal communications around around Canadian government communications shortly after the incident uh, there. Uh, but the you had the information uh, commissioner condemn the Department of National Defense because they've been uh, blocking pretty much this ATIP. They ignored the initial 30-day uh, deadline and they just didn't give an extension. Uh, but then they've gone further when the information commissioner condemned them for not giving the information. Uh, you actually had the Department of National Defense confirm that they're going to take it to the courts to uh, try to delay this uh, further. In their words, they're just, they have disputes with it, but let's be real here. They're trying to delay this further. So I'm just curious what you think here, Leif, because I think yeah, people maybe, unfortunately, with all the Israeli massacres and the ongoing genocide, uh, the Al Ali hospital uh, attack would might have been forgotten. But what do you think about this whole uh, situation? 
Well, it's clear evidence that the Canadian military is involved directly in the genocide uh, in uh, Palestine. Um, you know, anyone standing from the outside uh, could have, you know, recognized that it's important to get access to information so we can have evidence of it fully aired in front of the public. But the truth of the matter, there is Canadian special forces on the ground in Gaza. There is uh, constant uh, support to the Zionist, um, you know, campaign through Canadian um, intelligence and Canadian uh, information gathering. Uh, this is not, and, and of course, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of Canadian dual citizens that are on the ground fighting and committing uh, atrocities uh, on behalf of the Zionist colony. So all of these things is in the interest of the Canadian military and the Canadian establishment as a whole to hide them, at least the proof of them. We here know what's the fact. We know that this is happening. And, uh, you know, I, I don't trust the Globe and Mail to do anything good with whatever information they may get. Uh, it's uh, the only good thing is that you know, the Globe and Mail is a fascist publication anyway. It's just an imperialist, colonialist uh, publication. It supports uh, genocide in Gaza. It's Zionist, uh, led campaigns against me and anybody else who spoke against Zionism. So it's good to see them bicker with their masters. You know, they they think, those journalists, those, those, those uh, you know, fascists that work at the Globe and Mail think that they have a special status that uh, allows them to ask for these things. And they expect the Canadian government to give them to them because they provide so much service. So they get really angry when the Canadian government, who they have serviced uh, in their own propaganda, suddenly doesn't uh, you know, give them the access that they think that they have the privilege to have. So it's good for them to be care. It's good for them to waste their money. Uh, both the Globe and Mail and the Canadian uh, Defense uh, Ministry of Defense, uh, and it's good to, for the whole world to see the depravity of both the Canadian press and the Canadian um, uh, in, uh, military industry. All right, Leif. So we stick we stick with Kane News. Uh, you have the story in what could be described as the French CBC um, Radio Canada. Uh, it's liberal staffers pull support for party in Montreal by election, citing government stance on Gaza. So you have some political dispute with basically within the liberal party. It's, I believe it was 52. Uh, the writer of Canada describes them as Arab and Muslim staffers specifically. That's how they describe them. Um, obviously, we don't know their names exactly. So we have to go on that alone. Uh, so they these staffers, they've, Apparently gotten support from influential Arab and Muslim donors called the Network 100 GTA, London, Ottawa, and Montreal. So this whole situation uh, with the with the staffers and this upcoming by election uh, for the seat of La Salle Emer Verdun. Do you think this is going to have any impact with the Liberal staffers, or is this really a footnote in the greater thing scene of Canadian politics? You know, when I read this story, I thought this is the most advanced political maneuvering done by the Arab and Muslim communities anywhere in the West, uh, you know, um, uh, save for what happened in the UK with all these independents, uh, you know, winning these seats. But again, the, what I, you know, this is important because Montreal has at least 200,000 Lebanese uh, Canadians living in it. This is beyond the other Arabic and Muslim uh, members of uh, the community that live in Montreal. So this is the capital of Arabic culture in Canada. And so to see them, um, these, these staffers, actually uh, do such a, a political you know, um, theater and also uh, threaten the liberal, uh, you know, lib liberal party in such ways. This is impressive. Now, I personally think that uh, the, there was a mistake that was done in the UK with the Muslim communities 
uh, you know, going with the independence instead of, uh, you know, merging directly with the Workers' Party of George Galloway and having, you know, a leadership in a established party. Similarly, in Canada, right now, the problem for all of these uh, Arabic and Muslim communities is that they have no party that they can call their own, that ha they have a decisive voice in. Okay, so they're uh, at the margins of the Liberal Party. They're at the margins of the NDP. And what they need to do is take over, like the Zionists have taken over every political party in Canada, the Zionists control all the political narrative, no matter what party you're talking about. Well, all the Arabic and Muslim communities should invest in one party and one party alone to outmatch the Zionists inside that party and then purge them out like they have, like the Zionists have purged out anyone that speaks about uh, for the Palestinian liberation in all the other parties. So I, the, the easiest one would have been the Green Party uh, at the time of, uh, you know, Dimitri Laskaris being a, a part of it. It still is the easiest target party to uh, take over and they should do a hostile takeover publicly. I think the show of force should not be hidden. It should be done in a match, public match against the Zionists to have that. Okay, let, let the Zionists spend millions of dollars trying to uh, stop the Arab and Muslim community from taking over one of these parties. Uh, the NDP is, is a harder project to do because it's a much bigger uh, party. It has uh, also uh, very much uh, been infiltrated by liberal Zionists. Uh, I, I think, you know, this is the way forward. Otherwise, it's still a colonial state, Canada, even taking over a party or winning some seats in the, in the parliament is not going to make a difference. This is a core value of Canada is genocide. A core value of Canada is colonialism, is imperialism, is white supremacy. It's practically impossible to change that from within. Anyone that wants to enter the political field in Canada uh, are welcome to do so only if they realize what I just said, and only if they enter this political field as a form of uh, in sabotage to the system, not to be part of it. All right, Leith. So I mentioned uh, the Radio Canada story where I did for a specific reason. Uh, that's because Alex Tyrell, the leader of the Green Party of Quebec, he had an article in the Canada Files uh, pretty recently. And it's about the this subtitle that is featured in all the articles around the, around the Middle East. Uh, it's L'Eternel Conflict or Eternal Conflict in English, right? And so Tyrell uh, was understandably upset about such a such a title. This was not an eternal conflict. The Zionists uh, established their illegitimate colonial state in 1948. Uh, if you want to go all the way back to the Balfour Declaration of 1917, you could go all the way back there. But to say this is an internal conflict is is simply is simply insane. Uh, but you actually had the Radio Canada Ombudsman, Pierre Champeau. Uh, so basically the Radio Canada management view, their argument was the eternal, the dictionary definition for it. They apparently didn't need to follow it when writing subtitles and within articles. And the Ombudsman actually endorsed that. Uh, so is, so it's, that's just going to continue on. You're going to have the eternal conflict still in uh, the Radio Canada, and that's French CBC, a Canadian public a broadcaster, right? Uh, so, wait, tell us a little bit about the CBC and your thoughts on it. I think you'll have a lot to say. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the CBC is uh, garbage. Uh, it is led by a garbage woman. Uh, their ombudsman is garbage. Their editorial board is garbage. Their board of directors are garbage. They're all fascist. They're all... Uh, you know, tools of the Canadian state. Um, and uh, look, uh, the Zionists right now have taught us that wars have no meaning, right? Uh, you know, so 
a white European can be a Semite. Okay, this is what when they say anti-Semitism, you know, they 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 there's wars have no meaning, uh, uh, conflict instead of genocide, uh, children become Hamas uh, supporters, whatever it is. Like there's the the Zionists have destroyed not only the credibility of the West. Uh, not only did they destroy the uh, uh, hundred years of, of established propaganda, they destroyed the dictionary. They destroyed the <laughs> Webster uh, dictionary. And, uh, you know, once you see how the uh, journalists uh, in Canada and the CBC are so, uh, so wimpy, they have no backbone. There's no journalists that are doing anything. Um, they're all, I can buy them and sell them. If, if we have enough money, we can probably buy the uh, support of any journalist you want in Canada. These are all prostitutes. And uh, the CBC is actually the main propagator of the idea of Canada as a colonial power, as a world stage power, as a white supremacist power. It is without the CBC, there will be no such thing as Canada. There will be no such thing as Canada. And it should be a target. CBC should be a target. There is over 200 Palestinian journalists killed, massacred, genocided by the Israeli uh, state. And the Canadian journalists are responsible for this death. I like all the journalists in the West. And, uh, you know, they should be uh, on lists for uh, arrests to be brought in front of uh, war crimes tribunals. The, the CEO of CBC should be dragged at the end of this, uh, of this war to be tried in a liberated Jerusalem and then hung. All these propagandists that the Sun and the Globe and Mail and so on, they should be hung from in public squares when this genocide is ended. So I think their lives should be as miserable as the lives of Palestinian journalists. I'm going to leave the episode... Uh, there, Kenneth's audience. But before we do, though, because of the situation escalating in the West Bank, Leith, can you take the Kenneth's audience through the new work that Free Palestine TV is doing? Yes, we've just now started uh, doing daily reports from different parts of the West Bank. Our first, uh, you know, journalist uh, that we started working with is is, is reporting from Janine. He's doing two to three reports a day almost. Uh, breaking news. Uh, we've covered the yesterday, for instance, there was uh, an Israeli sniper that shot at journalists uh, outside uh, Jenin, just west of Jenin city uh, in uh, uh, Fardan uh, village and uh, did an interview with them. We filmed uh, the exodus from multiple parts of Jenin. And we're starting right now with another unit uh, uh, in the Jerusalem and Ramallah area, and hopefully inside and around, uh, you know, Khalil, Hebron. So these are daily reports, uh, as you know, as well as we're doing the uh, prisoners of war uh, uh, weekly episodes with freed prisoners of war from inside the West Bank. That's a very important uh, show. There is nothing like it out there, and it's translated for all everybody to read the transcripts of it. Please donate. Uh, join us as a wing monthly donor. Free Palestine. The video is the website. We really need uh, the help. All right, Leith. So, can follow viewers if you appreciate the analysis uh, in the show and the journalism of both can follow and Free Palestine TV. Please do support both of our outlets financially. One last little note. There are, the September 5th, the protests at CRA offices not, uh, around Canada. Yes, they, they, they should be much more ambitious. But there are protests demanding the charity statuses and benefits be stripped from, from these charities that support Israel. So that's just a point for people's information. They can do with it what they may. But that's it, Canada folks. Thanks for watching. Leith, thanks as always for co-hosting. And we will see uh, all you folks next week. Goodbye. See you soon.